Hello everyone, in this video I thought we'd show a couple neat little tricks you can use in Lua into your scenario in order to make things a little bit more dynamic. So what we're going to do today is we're basically going to try to set things up so that when people uh, start the scenario, a little box is going to pop up, it's going to ask them a question, they're going to answer that question, and then the scenario is going to do something depending on what they put as their answer. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, try this out and see what we can do here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to ask the user for a particular value. So to do that, I'm just going to use the good old fashioned technique that you've probably seen before. You probably have seen the message box, which is MSG box. But what we can also do is this thing called input box. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that right down here. So I'll go ahead and say, um, how many B52s would you like? Now, if I go ahead and run this code real fast, it's going to pop up and say, how many B52s would you like? A lot. Now, the problem we're going to have almost immediately is that the user might accidentally put the wrong thing into that little box since it doesn't have any error checking. So we have to do our own error checking here. So that's really where this is going to get tricky. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and save this as a number. Run this one again. Q. Good. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test to see whether or not the value they gave us was a number. So to do that, the uh, standard technique I like to do is I like to say the number equals to number the number. I know that seems a little weird, but in the event that you feed a string into this function, it will automatically return a nil value for you, which is awesome. So if we actually were to come here and print num, watch what happens if we do the letter Q this time. Ha ha, nil, no good. So this is a great thing to do. So now all we have to do is simply ask a question. If num, if not num, I know you're sitting there going, what? Okay, so if num is nil, therefore not nil is true. Two negatives make a positive. So if not num, <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and pop up in a message box here to let the user know that they've made a boo-boo. A message box will say, you did not enter the appropriate value. And we'll go ahead and say um, version 1. Let's go ahead and close this one off and we'll test it out to see if it works. All right, run. Q. Oh. I didn't enter the appropriate value. Good. So press OK. So now there's another problem we're going to run into. Let's run this, and I want negative 50 B52s. So we can come in here and say if not num, or num is less than a certain value. Or we can say or num is less than uh, 0, for example. I'll go ahead and break this up a little bit to make this a little bit simpler. So now we have a simple or statement here. Let's go ahead and run it now. We'll type in uh, minus 25. <laughs> I guess it didn't like that very much. Run it again, the letter Q. Fine, be that way. I'll try that one again. Uh, 50. Nice. It worked. It worked. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll come down here and create an else statement. And we'll do send edit and MSG box. Thanks for entering, entering a number. Generating B52s. Now, the problem we have here is the fact that with this current system we have now, it works perfectly. So if I press run, it's going to say I'm going to be 52. I'll give you 50 of those. I press OK. It's immediately going to give me an error because I forgot to do comma 1. Whoopsies. Try it again. 50 and generating that many B52s. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? So now if you want to be really, 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 really specific with this, which I always recommend, it's, it's, it's suggested, it's suggested, we can come in here and do something like this, num dot dot B52s. <laughs> so now when I run it, thank you for a number, generating 50 B52s. It actually takes that value and throws it back at us. Solid programming skill here. So the problem we have now is if we run this once for an entire scenario, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a certain number of B52s, but if the user gave us the wrong value, then this doesn't run. So if we're only running this once per iteration here, that's going to mean that we're in trouble. So what we're going to have to do now is we're basically going to have to put this entire thing in some kind of loop that keeps going until the user gives us a reasonable value. I'm actually going to be a little more specific here. Or num is less than, um, uh, uh, or num is greater than 50. Let's be specific here, just in case. Let's run that one one more time. Nine, 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 nine. Nice. I like that. So let's put this whole entire thing into a loop. In this case, I'm going to use a while true loop with a break command. So I'm going to go to the top of all this. I'm going to type in the word while true. Now, some of you are sitting there going, wait a minute. While true is an infinite loop. How do we get out? Well, don't worry. I've got a plan. Go ahead and take all this content here. Go ahead and hit tab so it makes it a little bit easier to see. So now what we have to do is when we do enter the appropriate value, we're just going to use a command called break. So I'm just going to come down here and type in the word break. And now we're in business. Let's try it out. Run uh, the letter Q. Oh, the letter R. A million. Okay, fine. Be that way. Smiley face. All right, fine. That be the way. A uh, nine hundred. All right, minus twenty. All right, fine. Be that way. Uh, Twenty-five. Nice. It worked. 
So now we're able to validate the input that the user is going to give us. Now that we have all that information ready to go, we can go ahead and get some work done. So I'm going to go ahead and say create ourselves a classic little loop. We're going to say, well, x equals 1, uh, x is less than num. And then we're simply going to go uh, by one do, come down here and press end. Now it's just a matter of randomly generating our units. But before we do that, we might as well create a couple sides here. We'll go ahead and create a blue team, nice and simple. And now we need to get some critical information such as what the unit ID is and everything for our buff. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and generate a little bit of local variables here. We'll do a uh, simple lat, ran lat equals math.random. We'll make it an absolutely massive zone here. We'll do a 40, uh, let's see what we're doing with latitude here. We'll do between 40 and 80 or 60, why not? Uh, we'll say for random longitude, we'll say a pretty wide range here. We'll say a minus, uh, let's see, minus 70 through positive minus 60. That's an absolutely massive, massive range for random numbers here. Oop, I have to actually do math dot random. All right, now we'll go ahead and fix up my little syntax errors here. Now we'll come down here and we'll simply go ahead and say, hey, well, let's go ahead and get ourselves an actual unit. So we'll do send edit add unit. Prepare for lots of stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing is we're going to need a type. We're going to do an aircraft. We're going to say name equals b52 hashtag dot dot. We'll use uh, x as our iterator here. We're going to say, let's see, we need a dbid. Let's go ahead and get the dbid of ourselves a b52 here. Database viewer, we'll type in b52. I'm a fan of the d model personally, but I'll deal with whatever I can get. We'll get this one right here, uh, 2265. Looks like it's going to be our magic value here. Whoa! 2265. We're going to need load out ID. We're going to have to get that value as well. So apparently I've just closed my little database viewer window here. Let's go grab it again. Scrolling down here, I can see that my, let's see here, we'll get some pretty standard weapons. Da -da -da. Harpoons. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Ooh, all sorts of harpoons. Cluster, but man, this must be a fun bombing run. Right, here we go. Let's get old school. Uh, 117 of these. 22916. 22916. Okay. You're probably sitting there going, well, that looks like it's roughly what we wanted it to do. Not really. So we're going to do latitude equals, I'll uh, we'll do ran lat. We'll do longitude equals ran long. Uh, we'll say we can do manual altitude if we choose to do so. There's a lot of different things. We could do course, we could do heading. But again, I'm trying to keep this uh, nice and simple for this particular application. So that's looking like it's going to be pretty solid. I'm sure I'm missing a piece here, but I'll let the error catching do all that hard work of its error catching for me. I'll go ahead and minimize this a little bit. All right, let's give it a try and see. Oh, we forgot something very important. Side. <laughs> Uh, if we forgot that one, we would have been in all sorts of trouble. All right, let's give it a try. Run, give me 25. Uh-oh, unable to create a new unit. Exception of type blah, 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 is thrown. Okay, that means I simply missed something within my little context here. Let me play with that for a minute. All right, I found my error. Oh, my boo-boo here was I forgot to give it an altitude. Ah, that's a newbie mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this code, and I'll see if everything works the way it's supposed to. Uh, give me 50 B-52s. Ha-ha, look at that! And now we have 50 B-52s. Each one of these B-52s are equipped with the exact loadout that I had. Now, there's a million and one different things you could do from the user. For example, we could ask, how many SAM sites would you like? How many of these would you like? How many of those would you like? How tough would you like the enemies? And you could sit here at the beginning of any scenario and actually go through it real quick. As a matter of fact, let's bring this in so it is at the beginning of the scenario. So I'm going to grab all my content here. Control A, Control C. Close my screen. I'm going to go delete all these guys. Thank you, guys. You've been wonderful. Let's go up to Editor. We'll go ahead and go up to the Event Editor. We can do this a couple different ways. We can do this as special action, or we can do this as an event. I'm going to stick to Event because it's simple. Let's say Start of Scenario. Let's say this one is active. It is not repeatable. It does not need to be shown in the log. We'll go ahead and add ourselves a trigger. Uh, scenario is started. It seems like a pretty straightforward one. Excellent. Go ahead and throw that one up there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our actions. We'll go ahead and create a new action called Lewis script, and we'll paste all of our hard work right here so that we can go ahead and use this whenever the scenario starts. So I'll probably should give that thing a name or something. Create buffs. <laughs> go ahead and close that. That oh, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I'm going to come down here, create buffs. I'm going to go ahead and add that and press OK. I'm going to make sure this is active, repeatable, is shown, does not need to be shown. Don't need to stress about that in any way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly save this scenario so we can play with it. Now, let's see here. I always just have, oh, there's autosave right there. I know you never save things as autosave, but oh well. So now I'm going to go ahead and open that scenario, and let's see what happens. Aha, look at that. Nice. Oh, no. <laughs> it still works. Isn't that amazing? So that means you can do entire customized scenario elements right at the beginning of the scenario. Enjoy.